Hey, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Ghost of Tsushima. And in this one, I want to go over some secret items that you guys can find throughout the world. These are just cosmetic items. They look pretty cool. In fact, some of them are the coolest looking items in the game, in my opinion. However, they are not marked on the map. They are off the beaten track. And unless you kind of follow the birds around the world, you can very easily walk past them. So in this video, I'm going to go over 19 items you definitely don't want to miss. Of course, if you don't want to see these, then by all means, this is your spoiler warning. Up until this point, I have just been standing out in the field, so there is no spoilers up until this point. But if you are watching beyond this and you don't want to see it, then uh, I highly suggest you step away and come back later. There won't be any story spoilers in this. I am just showing you some cool cosmetic items you can get, but this is your warning if you don't want to see it. Anyway, starting off at the beginning, I have broken these into the three portions of the island. Tsushima Island is broken down into thirds. You have Izuhara, the bottom part, then you have Toyotama, the middle part, and Kamiyagata, which is the top part. There are six in the bottom, six in the top, and seven in the middle. So for the very first one, what you want to do is go to the very bottom of the map, down to where you see me standing right here. This is the River Child's Wetlands. Now, generally speaking, anytime you get into the vicinity, you will normally find that the helpful yellow bird will fly by your shoulder and then you can just follow the bird to the general area. But sometimes the bird gets a little bit lost. Sometimes it will just stand in the general vicinity and then you then need to go and find it. But basically, what you're normally looking for are items like these. If they're headbands, they will be arrows stuck into something. And of course, if they are hats or they are masks, they'll be hanging on something. But either way, this is for the Chikorin headband. For the next one, we are going over to the east side of the map. You can see it is just kind of northeast of the Kuto grasslands, very near this settlement that you can clear. But if you go over into this field, then you actually find one of my favorite items, an item that I am still to this day wearing, which is the Oni's Blade straw hat. It's basically a red straw hat, this cool kind of gold symbol on the front, looks incredibly cool, and it basically goes with my end game armor set. So uh, yeah, I love this one, definitely my favorite item. After that, if you then go over to the west side of the map, we are basically in the middle of, or kind of right between Exiles Bluff on the left and the Azure Pond over on the right. And if you go over to the pathway that you're seeing me on right now, there is basically a bamboo pole right by the side of the road with the Wanderer's Straw Hat hanging on top of it. For the next one, we are heading over to the small settlement that is just northwest of the Cloud Pass. This is also the same settlement where you can go to basically hand in your Sashimono war banners to get horse saddles. But for this one, you are actually going to be going over to the Forge, and this is for the Forge Master's headband, rather aptly named. But what you need to do is go around the back of the building, climb on top, climb up the roof, and then drop into the hole from the top of the roof. You'll then drop onto one of the beams, one of the rafters, and from there you can then go to the edge and find the headband over there. For the next one, we're going to be going over to the east side of the map up a little bit, and this one is to the Ariake Lighthouse. And for this one, you simply need to climb to the top. Keep in mind, there are some of these you will need to have got to a certain point in the story because you will need to have unlocked the grappling hook. Because for this one, and for a lot of them, there are temples that you can basically just jump up and grapple onto the edge, and you can then climb up to the top. And in doing so, you can then go and find a lot of these items. So uh, for this one, you need to do exactly that. Climb to the top of the lighthouse, and you'll then go and find the Natural Vengeance headband. And then for the very last one on this part of the island, we have the Warrior's Sunset Headband. For this one, you want to go down to the Golden Temple. And much like the last one, you are simply going to climb said temple. You just go to the very edge of it, you jump off the veranda, you grapple up, and you can continue to do this to climb to the very, very top. And at the top of that, you will then find your next headband. With that done, you have then now got all the uh, secret cosmetic items in Izuhara. Keep in mind, there are, of course, other cosmetics you'll get through story progression, some of them you get from other collectibles. But in terms of items that are just located in the world but not marked on the map, this is Izuhara complete. So moving on from there up to Toyotama, this one is very north of the lowest settlement, just to the east of the Drowned Man Shore, but basically north of this village, you then want to go and you'll find this kind of dilapidated structure. What you need to do again is use your grappling hook to climb up slightly higher. There is then an entrance to the upper floor of the building through one of the walls. Climb through there, go across the rafters, and you will then get the healer's headband. Then if you go a little bit northeast of that same location, in fact, this one is incredibly close, and this is one of the ones you guys might have seen in the early gameplay trailer they shared. In fact, that's how I kind of knew to look for this location, because as you're walking around, there was a hat hanging on a statue. Anyway, besides that point, this is where you want to go. You go to see the statue in the middle of the lake, and you can then just simply 
steal its hat, and that is the Wood Spirit Straw Hat. After that, if you then go to the middle of the map and you go down to just below the Cushy Grasslands, this is north of that temple you'll see there. And for this one, quite simple, there will be this dilapidated structure or kind of, you know, barely a building left, just this sort of destroyed structure in the middle of the field. And on top of that, there is a pillar or like a kind of big stick. And on top of that is the riverbed straw hat. For this next one, we are going over to the west side of the map, to the Omi Monastery. You can actually fast travel to this location if you have already been there. And quite simply, we're going to be climbing the giant temple structure in the middle of the monastery. The one that is, of course, opposing the statue. But again, same principle, jump up onto the side and use your grappling hook to continue to climb to the very top. You'll then find an arrow in the central pillar and you can then grab the next headband. For this next one, if you go to the location you see on the map, which is just to the right of Fort Koyasan, and this is basically up this kind of ominous looking tower. You walk over to it and there's like a load of sort of people standing outside with a load of sort of pieces of paper hanging outside it. Looks a little bit ominous, but you walk inside, climb to the very top of the tower. You don't even need to use your grappling hook for this one. And when you get to the top and you get to the viewing platform, you will see there is an arrow on the flooring. And of course, inside that one is this blindfold slash headband. After that, we're then going to be jumping over to the west side of the map to just below, kind of southeast of Yoshinaka Bay. And for this one, you basically want to go to the location you see me right now because you walk to effectively the cliff face and right on the edge of the rock is another one of those sort of staves or spears in the ground with a hat just hanging on the end of it. Walk over, grab it, and it is yours. Then finally, for the last one on the Toyotama Island, or Toyotama portion of the island, should I say, you want to go to Kushi Temple, which is right in the middle, and uh, again, you want to climb the temple. Same principle, use your grappling hook, climb all the way to the very top, and you will then find the Plum Blossom Headband. Now, moving on from there, we're now going to the final third of the map. This time we're going up to Kamiyagata, and for this one, you want to start just below, just kind of south of the Deep Forest Lake. There is a small building over here, and when you walk out, you don't even need to kind of go climbing. You simply, on the veranda outside, there is a mask for you to collect, which is the Ivory of Woe mask. This kind of interesting white mask with some lipstick on. Interesting design, but uh, that is a new mask. After that, we're then going to be jumping over to the Jogaku Temple Lake. This is basically just overlooking the lake, and this is uh, quite possibly one of the best helmets, just because it's hilarious. But this is the Tengai, it looks like you've just taken a basket and just put it on your face and then cut some holes in it so you can see out of it. Either way, that is your uh, helmet. And while we are in the same vicinity, if you actually go into the Jogaku Temple grounds and you climb the temple itself, you can then get the Crooked Kama Headband. After that, if you go to the west part of the map, up to the Cedar Temple, here again you want to climb the temple to the very top, and for this one you'll get the Sago Blue Headband. Moving on from there, if you go to the settlement that is just north of Sago Forest on the map, and you then want to go to the kind of other side of the bridge, just outside of where you fast travel, and you'll go into this kind of open area. Typically when you get to this area, a yellow bird will fly by your side, which will kind of lead you over here. But you basically want to go to where I am now, walk inside the building, and there is a blue mask for you to take. And this is the Sadio's Glare mask, which is uh, incredibly cool. Blue mask for those of you guys that uh, like blue. You can probably tell by my character choice that red is basically my chosen colour scheme. But if you want blue, that is your choice. And then finally, for the last, the 19th item, the Skeletal Vengeance Mask, which does look quite cool, the kind of like slightly more Grim reaper -y look to it. For this one, you want to go to the Stonecutter's Village that is located right here on the map. And again, once you get there, you literally just walk into the workshop by these two statues. There'll be a mask lying on the table. Pick it up, and that is yours. So, with that being said, you now have 19 cosmetic or vanity items that are also going to go towards your collectible title if you are kind of trying to 100% the game then there are 59 collectibles again some of those you will obtain simply through story progression some of those are sword kits which I will of course be showing you in a separate video and the other ones of course are these ones again not located on the map so they are a little bit hard to find sometimes and it's very easy to miss them so hopefully this guide has helped you guys out if you have any questions by all means let me know in the comments down below and of course be sure to keep it locked for plenty more Tsushima content. 
Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Don't forget, if you haven't already done so, you can join the Arax Gaming Discord. We've got an awesome community over there with so many different channels for you to chat loads of different topics and different games. I'm in there, the team's in there. If you guys want to chat with us, find people to play with, it's just in general a great place to be. And of course, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to turn on those notifications so you don't miss any of our future uploads.